And we're back. We're back with Ryan. So still at uh, the uh, AGI Foundation 2025 event in Austin. Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's been great. It's been great event. So I'll ask you about the event. What have you seen there? We started discussing at a panel where you had some interesting realization, maybe, or you know, thoughts, and we'll, we'll share about them. But before we get into that, who are you? What do you do? That's a great question. So I'm uh, currently business development manager at Free Wave Technologies. Okay. We're based out of Boulder, Colorado, and we do private 900 megahertz wireless networks. So if you're in oil and gas, energy infrastructure, okay. you're probably familiar with us. But yeah, there's there's no Wi-Fi, there's no cellular tower, okay. nowhere in the in the middle of nowhere. So we're the, I guess you can think of us as long range private Wi-Fi. Okay. Interesting. I've heard about that already. Yeah. You know, I've been in IoT for a long time. Yeah. And so we've, we've, we've talked a lot about getting to the places where there's no connectivity. Yeah. You know, and Lower One has been a big, you know, there's been a big push, but we're low bandwidth, so it's not always really efficient there. So, yeah, interesting scenarios there. Yeah. Well, we might have you back on the IoT show for a deeper dive into that. I, particularly yeah, I'm talking about it. Awesome. Thank you. But here we are at the uh, NGI event. Uh, from the foundation and, and very interesting talk that we have today. It's first day. Yeah. It started pretty hard. It's a great event. It started pretty, I've been to some sessions that were like very technical. Some of the ones that were trying to focus more on the business aspect of things. Yeah. Uh, there was an interesting panel. I couldn't be here uh, for the panel. Yeah. But you were telling me that there were some interesting discussions there. Yeah, I think the, the edge panel how they, uh, that Pete led to end the day with... Uh, Rob, Stephanie, and a few others. It was a very interesting discussion. And, yeah. and it just kept bringing me to the point to where you have these uh, OT heavy sensor manufacturers, machine vision. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with these industrial use cases. And they're really great at solving problems on the machinery level, yeah. on the OT level, right? Hey, I'll sell you this laser sensor, this temperature vibration sensor. Well, where I'm still seeing that disconnect is where I don't think software can necessarily move as quick to address those situations. Mm -hmm. Take a manufacturing facility, for example. Yeah. If production's down or inhibited, they are throwing everything at it to get yeah. that up and running. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You look at a final assembly plant for an automotive company, and they will actually charge system integrators by the minute tens of thousands of dollars for losing production. If you're rolling a sixty thousand dollar truck off the assembly line every four minutes, that adds up very quickly, right? True. So a lot of these companies on the OT side of things are great at solving these issues, mapping it to a PLC, uh -huh. but that's just a band aid, right? And I think now when we're looking at edge AI, I'm always trying to think of okay, how can we address those issues and have software companies partner with these traditional hardware companies, mm -hmm. allowing them to move quick enough to address those problems today? Interesting. And that's interesting. And there's, there's something that I'm reacting on that because I'm actually working with customers who are looking into, well, they're at the stage of connecting their assets to know when they're down. Yeah. Just, but you know what? That's the reality of things, right? They have yeah. PLCs yeah. that operate and that do their shit, and then suddenly, it goes down, and they, as you were saying, need to scramble to figure it out. Very often, they cannot do post-mortem yeah. because they have to continue producing. Yeah. And and you're telling them, hey, I've got this new IoT thing, and it's, you need to change everything. It's like, hey, no way. Yeah, don't touch no anything. Way. But that's interesting because the AGI comes with a proposal that potentially you know, allows you to run intelligence as close as possible to what it is produced yeah. without being too intrusive. Yeah, that's, yeah. And, and being able to first monitor what's going on, right? And so the solution we're looking into is like, how do we bring some algorithms? Well, first, like some entity that would be running down there and hooking up to an OPC Way network, eventually back to like Mobbus, CAN, whatever is there, and, and model the data to make sense of it. Yeah. That's the first freaking stage yeah. before doing anything else, right? And that's a lot of, a lot of manufacturing customers today still struggle with basic networking. Yeah. They have they have legacy equipment, they have machines that have been running for 30, 40 years yeah. that are running on like a PLC5 from Rockwell. Yeah. So, okay, how do I, and then the machine next to it could have a brand new Siemens PLC on it. Yeah, yeah. So how am I pulling data from not only this brand and the generations of those brands, but also these other brands in the process? Yeah, yeah. 
And then how do I create a wireless local network when you're in a manufacturing facility and there's very tall metal structures? Well, that's not great for yeah, RF. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Right? So interesting. how are you going yeah. to, you know, yeah. okay, so you have an ethernet network. How yeah. old is that ethernet network? Because I've been in automotive facilities where the manufacturing facility, the ethernet that they laid is so old that it can't handle all the traffic. Yeah, because yeah, it's usually cat one or cat two. Yeah, <laughs> what is? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's true. You're right. True. I mean, it's like, how are we going to solve these problems with AI if we don't have access to the data, if we don't have the networking skills? And I think, uh, yes, there's solutions out there. You have yeah, inductive yeah. automation. You have, uh, with Ignition, you have Kepware. Yeah, right? yeah. You have this protocol. Yeah conversion these aggregators right yeah, true but even then before you get there okay solve the networking okay then normalize the data yeah and by then how much are, how much time have you taken away from their uptime productivity yeah yeah true. how many tens true. of thousands of dollars have they invested true. and they haven't seen a dime at this point true true but so that begs the question yeah, like is AGI going to pierce or help in that domain? And if that's the case, how do you see it oh. really being used? It. I'm still hopeful. I really am. Yeah, I think I think there's going to be a startup that just comes out of nowhere. How much is a license for any of these software companies? I've yeah, mentioned? sure. Yeah, how much is an HMI license? I'm not even going to say right, but two thousand dollars for a piece of software. Mm -hmm. Just to visualize data. And yeah, yeah, her. yeah. Someone's gonna figure out. Okay, I can make this little Swiss Army knife and start with PLCs. I really think there's gonna be a startup that solves the data normalization layer, and then they're able to monetize the insights off the AI. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone do it. Yeah. Well, there are, there are concepts like there's, there's there are concepts people are trying to to unite around this notion of unified namespace, right? Yes. Yeah, to try and and unify the data from these different sources. Once the data has been unified, you're already one step further to be to be able to have that data being consumed yeah. by some form of AI that could do anomaly detection, could do predictive maintenance, could do that. What has been promised yeah. when we're talking about IoT and connecting assets, right? Oh, man. Yeah, I was actually at the Prove It conference last week yeah, with Walker true. Reynolds and the yeah, Unified yeah. Space guys. And it was nice. You know, it was nice to see the vent not all vendors were successful. Okay. Yes. So there's that vaporware, right? Yeah, there's yeah. these these big brands, these big logos. I'm not going to mention any names, but they give you this promise of it's easy to connect up all your assets. It's we're going to give you, you know, it's going to be magic. We're going to give you this single pane of glass, and it's going to solve all your problems. <laughs> well, no, you need to you need to not only work with mapping that data, but you have to work with the process specialist, the subject matter experts, and say, okay. What's your biggest cause of downtime with this particular part of your process? Yeah, yeah. And I, I being in the uh, automotive manufacturing in Michigan, those are always very visible. And so there's not, not everything is climate control. Yeah. So there's a huge manufacturing uh, tier one automotive supplier in uh, Saline, Michigan, and they do like injection molding and different processes. But during the summer, it was really hot and humid, and they would actually have adhesive issues. So they would have like instrument panels were coming apart with parts in the process. Well, that only happened when it was really hot and humid. Yeah, yeah. So unless you had like a temperature humidity sensor and you were able to correlate that data with the production info, you're not going to know anything. Right? Yeah, so you have to sure. capture, you know, the right metric. You have to talk to the controls yeah. engineer. Sure the process, the quality engineering, you say, yeah, what should we be looking for? Are we gathering the right type of data yeah. to solve these problems? So I think until you have that. Capturing the right type of data and making sense of it. Yeah. And and interestingly, interestingly, when you think about who's dealing with data these days, it's like data scientists or business people. Yeah. Not the operators. So they don't really know what to do with that data actually. Right? If you send yeah. it all to the cloud and to some hard BI and Whatever, even Microsoft Fabric for someone to figure out what to do with it. Oh, that is exactly it. I love talking to operators. When, yeah. when I go into a manufacturing facility, I think I, you know, I kind of judge people. When you get in, you, you know, you have you get into the meeting room, you walk through the manufacturing facility, you set your stuff down, and they go, "Do you want to walk the floor?" It should always be a yes. 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 If you say no. I, I would almost ask you to leave if I were a manufacturer. 
true. Because no process is the same. Yeah, true. you could have duplicate lines in the yeah. same facility with two different engineers, and they're going to have different issues. Yeah, and they're going to have different programming changes. True. Right? And so, it's 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 uh, it's really tough. Uh, to try and say that you know everything. But almost every scenario where I went into a facility and they're like, I have this really tough problem. I don't know how to solve it. I'm like, okay. And they'll yeah, be like, yeah. engineer, hard headed. He's like, I'm going to go back to my desk and grab something. As soon as he leaves, I talk to the operator. I'm like, hey, what's really going on? <laughs> Nine times out of 10, they told me what was really going on. But because I said it, even though the operator said it a million times, I have to reframe yeah, yeah. it, you know, put it in engineering terms. They, a lot of these operators are doing the same thing a thousand times a day. Sure. They want the machine to run. Sure. They don't want to get yelled at. They don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Sure. Sometimes you deal with operators sabotaging equipment, sticking things in weld tips because they're not getting breaks. Yeah. Okay, I get that. But a majority of the time, people don't want problems. They don't like friction. And so yeah. if this is getting in the way of them doing their job, yeah. They're going to want to solve their problem. Sure, and almost true. every time they can tell you. So back to your comment about the fact that you're, you're hopeful. I'm hopeful. You're hopeful. Do you think AGI is going to help solve some of these problems and how do you think it's going to be the case? Man, you asked this question five minutes ago and I didn't even answer it. So yeah. I appreciate you bringing <laughs> us back. I do think it's helpful because I think now more so than any other time, it's easier to deploy these solutions. In fact, GitHub... GitHub has a ton of options. Edge AI Foundation is starting to roll out models. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hardware. Not everything has to be a GPU, NVIDIA powered, specific, high yeah. horsepower, you know? I think of NVIDIA, they're like a, a sports car, right? I mean, you have to run them high heat, high power all the time. Well, that's not, a majority of the AI applications aren't that. Mm -hmm. sure. You can do a lot with an NPU. Yeah. And so I'm seeing a lot of, uh, hardware manufacturers refreshing those. I think the gap that we're seeing now is new hardware, and then you have a lot of startup companies or software companies that are trying to figure out how to monetize it. Yeah. Because that you on the software side of things, I just recently came from an IoT platform company. You got to look at it and say, okay, who do we want to invest our time and resources in? Is this a scalable problem? Is this going to be profitable for us to have our engineers build this? And on the hardware side, yeah. you're doing the same thing. But the problem with hardware companies is a lot of them view software not as a business expense, but they, they just see it as a waste of money. It's a yeah, tax, yeah. right? Yeah. They say, okay, I don't want to invest in software. Well, that's where AI is going to be its best is you have hardware working in collaboration with software to solve problems. So yeah. you need you need these hard-headed industrial manufacturers with all this application knowledge and the trust that they built up with their end users to keep their machines running and that sense of urgency that they understand. You have to have the software companies being able to, you know, also have that trust and saying, True. I trust that you're good at what you do and you know what problems you solve and I trust that I'm picking a winner. And unfortunately, I see a lot of AI the divide, the divide is real. The divide is real. I mean, these are two different worlds. It is. You, you see these AI startup mentalities where they try to do it all themselves. Yeah. Or they go through partnerships. Well, I think a lot of them get lost because they don't have access to the end user to understand the problems more thoroughly. So I really think it takes yeah, a team. True. You need someone with access to a channel and partnerships and end user you need hardware excellence. You need software excellence. And then I think AGI, yeah, I'm very hopeful. There's hope. I'm, There's I'm hope. very hopeful. Awesome, Ryan. Thanks thank for you. giving us hope. Yeah, thank you. It's great. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by.